Okay, uh, my name is Scott Hara. I'm from Qualcomm. I'm part of the product management team. Uh, my focus is on HPC uh, vertical. Hmm. If this was an ARM based platform, this would have just worked. And it still doesn't work. Hmm. Whoa, hold on a second. Ah, there you go. Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is first I'm going to do an introduction to Qualcomm Data Center Technologies. We're a wholly owned subsidiary of Qualcomm. Uh, we're new to the space, so I figured it'd be worthwhile to do a little introduction. Uh, then I'm going to introduce Century 2400 processor. It's our first generation of data center processor. And then we'll go through some uh, performance uh, benchmarks. So in this slide, I want to talk about some of the core competencies of QDT, or Qualcomm Data Center Technologies. And it starts with process technology. So the Century 2400, which was launched yesterday, or last week, I'm sorry, is the first 10, nan 10 nanometer data center processor. 10 nanometer data, the, ten, the access to the 10 nanometer process uh, is, is not really a core competency, but a, a statement of our volume, right? So Qualcomm produces between 850 and 900 million silicon-based parts per year, and because of that volume, we get access to Samsung's leading uh, 10 nanometer process node. The value of that process technology is, really can't be overstated. And over the last decade, you've seen one vendor has had, has had the ability to hide architectural and design issues behind their process advantage and still deliver leading class performance processors. With our access to leading edge node, we, we've leveled the playing field. And this puts the onus more on the architecture and design. And Centrique 2400 is our fifth generation of custom microarchitecture designed for, to support the ARM ISA. We have a leading a world-class engineering team that's been able to take these types of designs for five generations and put them on silicon in performant and power efficient ways. These guys started out in the Snapdragon team and uh, made their way into data center. Four generations in, in handheld. This, this is the first generation uh, data center processor. And what we produced was a performant, efficient processor. And the only way we can deliver this was close co-design partnerships, working with ARM Research and Microsoft, who's been very vocal about their support. They helped us understand design, design criteria as we would need to support production, workloads, and data in hyperscale environments. All these things together allowed us to produce a performant, efficient processor uh, that was designed for, from the ground up for throughput compute to support cloud infrastructure. This is a cartoon drawing of our architecture. If you've paid attention to our uh, talk at Hot Chips this year, you probably would have seen this, or I think this was also presented at our launch last week. Starting at the top and bottom of the chip, you see six blocks. Those represent DDR4, 2667 uh, memory channels. On the right side, you'll see uh, 30, 32 lanes of PCI Express Gen 3 uh, interconnect. And then on the left side, you'll see things like SATA and other slow I.O. ports, along with um, legacy support that usually winds up in a co-chip, a, co a companion chip, or a south bridge. This is an OSOC, so it's all been integrated for efficiency. If we move one step in, the next level of blocks there represent uh, uh, 60 megabytes of uh, unified L3 cache. And the next step in, you see these blocks. These represent um, our core duplexes. So a core duplex is built up of two centric 
uh, cores combined to, or sharing a 512 kbyte K L2 cache. This, the cores are called Falcor, and this is the custom microarchitecture design that we d developed to support the ARMv8.2 uh, ISA. It only supports ARC64. There's no har hardware support for 32-bit instructions. It runs at a base frequency of 2.2 gigahertz and has a sustained peak frequency of 2.6 gigahertz. And sustained peak is actually pretty important. So this was designed as a throughput processor. And sustained peak means that with all cores running full speed, we can, attain, we can still attain 2.6 gigahertz. And so if you look at synthetic benchmarks, many of them will stress the part beyond production workloads. And even in those conditions, we're running at 2.6 gigahertz sustained. Other features around the Falcor CPU uh, is that we have uh, a 64 k byte L1 cache and a uh, 24 k byte L0 cache with single cycle latencies. This is added to increase efficiency uh, and, and performance of our chip. Things you can't see in here are coherent memory interface. This chip was designed as a UP only, so a single socket chip. There's no two socket designs. The total core count is for up to 48 single threaded CPU cores. And this package, the, the, the largest or highest skew package, uh, dissipates about 200 or 120 watts. Um, all these pieces inside are connected by a uh, bidirectional multi-ring fully co coherent bus that has an aggregate bandwidth of 250 gigabytes per second. Okay, now we're gonna start looking at performance. So this is a ground up design. This was designed from the ground up <laughs> to, as a throughput compute engine to support cloud-based infrastructures. So some of the things that we did in these benchmarks may seem odd to the HPC world. For instance, we use GCC-02 for building the benchmarks for Centrique as well as the Intel pro processor. We also enable SMT or hyperthreading because that's what our partners uh, wanted to see for apples to apples comparison. So this particular benchmark is spec CPU. The left pair is uh, the spec int numbers and the right pair represents the spec FP numbers. The white bars are the Intel-based processor and the blue bars are the Qualcomm processor. The processor we chose from Intel is the 8160 because we wanted to do an ISO thread comparison. 8160 has 24 cores and when you turn on SMT, it has 48 threads. Our 20-centric 20, 20 2460 has 48 dedicated hardware threads. And so ISO thread, we get about parity performance. Actually, for spec int, we get about a 7% better performance. And for spec FP, we get 13% better performance. Now, this is a look at performance per watt. So if you took those numbers from the previous slide and you divide it by the power dissipation, you get these values. The left pair is looking at the top bin platinum uh, range, and the middle pair is looking at the gold range, and the right pair is looking at the silver range. Each of the Intel processors that we choose, chose to compare with represent the top skew of those particular ranges. And you can see from a power performance point of view, we have leadership uh, across all the ranges. So this is spec int versus TDP. The next slide is, okay, if you're not running at full TDP all the time, where are you running uh, in production? So if you take that benchmark and we look at the power dissipation per socket, we see that Qualcomm's uh, Centric 2400 is running at a median power dissipation of 65 watts for 120 watt TDP part. So we're getting performance parity at uh, much lower than TDP dissipation. Oh. 
Ah, OK. So the previous slide, we compared that red line to the top white line. And we saw we had an advantage. This slide, we can't do a comparison because we didn't know if we had a common part or a typical part for Xeon. But I encourage you to do these kinds of comparisons. Look at performance per watt under production loads. That was spec int. This is spec FP. Oop. Turns out to about the same, right? We see a median participation of about 65 watts. <clears throat> hmm. I lost a couple slides in here, I think. <laughs> that went much faster than I thought it would go. So, you know, this is the summary slide. So, uh, you know, so because of our design experience and our access to the leading edge node, um, I think our future products will, will, will be a good R, a partner in the R, HPC vertical. Our initial product was focused on throughput computing for the cloud. And actually, it turns out to be pretty performant for um, capacity workloads in HPC. In our booth, or in the ARM booth, you'll see we have a demo that matches throughput computing, uh, genetic analysis, which the throughput computing part would be the alignment and variant calling, plus data analytics, where we perform very well. If you look at our performance on Spark and Hadoop, we should, especially from a power performance perspective, we should show up very well. Co-design was a very important part of our success. Without the partnerships uh, with the uh, hyperscale customers and partners, we wouldn't have had the design criteria we would need to develop a leading class part. And this is actually a plea to the HPC community to see if we can find equally valuable co-design partners uh, for, for future products. And that's it. Thank you. I th